हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल उमनीगान मेरे चैनल उमनीगान में आप सब लोगों को फिर से बहुत बहुत स्वागत है तो दिस इज द लास्ट लेसन फ्रॉम द एडिशनल इंग्लिश सिलेबस ऑफ क्लास 11 अंडर द मेघालय बोर्ड ऑफ स्कूल एजुकेशन एम्बोस सिलेबस ओके एंड दिस इज द लास्ट पोएम लाइट शाइनिंग आउट ऑफ डार्कनेस ओके रिटन बाय विलियम कूपर दो इट इज सी ओ डब्ल्यू पी ई आर इफ यू नोट इट इज सी ओ डब्ल्यू पी ई आर इट्स नॉट काउपर ओके इट्स कूपर के डबल ओ इट 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 इज प्रोनाउंस लाइक K C O W is Ku, okay, and P E R P, okay. So William Cooper, it's a beautiful poem, and I'm going to make a line by line explanation in this poem for your all your convenience, okay. So let us learn the poem without much ado. Okay, so let us see stanza one. Okay, there are total. Six stanzas in the poem, and uh, each stanza consists of four lines only. So it's not a very big poem, uh, you know, quite a small poem. Okay, so let us see. And while I explain you, please keep the textbook in front of you. Okay. <clears throat> so God moves in a mysterious way; His wonders to perform. He plants His footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. What is the explanation? The first two lines, that is, God moves in a mysterious way. He wonders to his wonders to perform. The first two lines in the first uh, stanza means that God works in a mysterious way. Mysterious means unknown, okay, which we do not know. Mysterious, okay. So God works in a very mysterious way, which is beyond the understanding of human beings. See, we human beings are very simple, so it is beyond the understanding of uh, the human beings. to understand god's works how god works actually the actions of god is very mysterious and we cannot understand this very easily right and god's intentions are hidden from human understanding so god never reveals his uh, actions to the human beings okay his intentions are hidden from human understanding and yet they are the best for humanity with a purpose in life see behind every god's uh you know work there is some intention which we are unable to understand god ke kaam karne ke piche jo hai koi na koi ek reason hai there is always a reason behind god's work okay that we cannot understand but we should not doubt god's actions because they are actually good for our uh, you know for our life only okay and yet they are the best for humanity with a purpose in life behind every god's action there is a reason there is a purpose which is good for us human beings okay but these again these intentions are hidden from us and we cannot understand this uh, his actions very easily theek hai he wonders to perform the poet also says that god has done many miracles but these miracles cannot be understood by humans because they are so much mysterious okay so his wonders to perform means what that god has done so many miracles okay not magic magic is a different thing magic is done by human beings but miracles are done by god so god has done many miracles but these miracles we cannot understand human beings cannot understand these miracles because these miracles are very mysterious you know every day some kind of uh, miracles are happening in our life but we consider them as, uh, those miracles as normal hame lagta hai ki wo jo मेराकल्स हो रहा है हमारा साथ ओके okay? वो नॉर्मल है डे टू डे चीजें है जो हमारा साथ हो रहा है तो इसलिए हमें वो समझ में नहीं आता है लेकिन बट इट इज एक्चुअली डन बाई गॉड ऑनली बट गॉड ही है जो उन मेराकल्स को करता है ठीक है सो हियर यू सी द लास्ट टू लाइन्स ही प्लान इज फुट स्टेप्स इन द सी एंड राइड अपॉन द स्टॉन्ग सो द लास्ट टू लाइन्स Here you see the last two lines show the power of God. ठीक है? He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. See these lines actually it creates a vivid and powerful biblical image. Okay, biblical image. Again these are references to the Bible actually. The last two lines he plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. These are actually biblical image or uh, uh, you know uh, references from the Bible. which shows uh, jesus christ walking on the sea and riding a storm theek hai to ye bible ka reference hai jahan pe lord jesus jo hai wo samandar ke upar chal rahe hai okay 
he plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. So, where Jesus is walking on the sea and he is riding a storm. Okay, kitna powerful hai God, aap dekhe. So, God has the ability to imprint his footsteps in the sea and the power to govern the storm. See, when we walk, definitely we cannot walk on water, right? Can we walk on water? No, we cannot walk on water. We can only walk on solid objects, right? We can only walk on solid objects. We cannot walk on water, but it is only God who can walk on water also and leave his imprint. Okay, imprint of his, print of his footsteps can be found on water. First of all, see, we human beings, we cannot walk on water. Second of all, secondly, even if you try to walk on water also, I mean water which are, uh, you know, uh, near to the shore actually, okay. Uh, the, the level of water is very low, where you can walk upon, say for example, okay, still our footsteps, no, our footsteps cannot be left on the marks of our footsteps cannot be left on the water, right? Okay, it can be left on sand but not on water. So, here you see again the power of God that he has, only God has the ability to imprint his footsteps in the sea and the power to govern the storm. It is only God who can govern the, who can govern the storm. So, a God hi hai, jo apna footsteps paane ko par rakh sakta hai. Aur ek God hi hai, jo storm ko, tufan ko, apne hisaap se chalata hai. Okay? The even storm also works according to the will of God. Matlab, God can control even storm also. We human beings cannot. Okay, so we are so tiny creatures that we cannot do anything. Right? But still, you see, nowadays, you see, we human beings, we consider ourselves so powerful. Okay, just because some people have money, just because some people are rich, just because some people have, uh, you know, uh, very high status in the society. So, these kind of people, they think that they are very powerful. But no, we are nobody in front of God. We are nobody. Okay. We do not have any. We do not have. Okay. We do not have. We have nothing. Okay. We are nothing in front of God. Okay. So, the poet wished to say that God controls nature. Okay. So, it is God. Who alone can control nature, no one else can do that. Okay. I hope you have understood. Stanza 2. Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill, he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. Iska matlab kya hai? The second stanza also shows the power and strength of God. How? God can perform. Here you see deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill. So, God can perform his actions even in deep minds whose depth is infinite or immeasurable. Mind to aapko pata hoga. Minds, okay. Like coal mines, gold mines, right. So, God can perform his actions even in deep minds whose depth cannot be measured. You have definitely seen a well. A well has an end, right? A kue ka jo hai, an ant hota hai, ek end hota hai. But those minds which cannot be measured, whose depth is infinite, God can even, even perform his actions there also. So, God's works or actions are always perfect and never fails. Here, look at the line of never failing skill. So, we human beings, we are imperfect. We are not perfect. Our actions keeps on failing. Our work that we do keeps on failing. But God's Works or actions are always perfect and never fails. Okay? God ka jo kaam hai, wo itna perfect hai, wo kabhi fail nahi hai. Okay? So, here the poet means to say that how tiny we human beings are in front of God. Jaisi ki meinne pehle kaha, I just told you that the poet means to say that we human beings, we are so tiny in front of God. So, we must not think ourselves powerful. So, though we boast of our power, but we are nothing in front of God. We, we keep boasting about our power, I have this much money, I have that much money, I can do this, I can do that, I can manipulate this, I can manipulate that. But we are nothing in front of God. Okay, so we must sometimes be God fearful. Okay, oh, I am sorry, God fearing. We must realize this thing, we must realize this thing that we are nothing in front of God and then 
एंड दैट गॉड इज ओमनीपोटेंट ऑल पावरफुल ओके ये चीजें जब हम रियलाइज करेंगे हर दिन एवरी डे इफ वी कीप ऑन रियलाइजिंग दिस थिंग देन वी विल नेवर बोस्ट ऑफ आर पावर नो इट डजेंट मैटर दैट वी वी मे बी वेरी रिच वी मे हैव इमेंस पावर इन द सोसाइटी बट स्टिल वी विल कीप ऑन रियलाइजिंग दैट वी आर नथिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ गॉड ओके बिकॉज देर आर ह्यूमन बींग्स हैव सेवरल लिमिटेशन गॉड डज नॉट हैव एनी लिमिटेशन गॉड कैन डू एनी थिंग एंड एवरी थिंग ह्यूमन बींग्स के नॉट ओके तो वेन द मोमेंट वी हैव दिस रियलाइजेशन वी विल नेवर बोस्ट ऑफ आवर पावर ठीक है then you see the poet then says that yahan pe dekhi he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will the poet then says that god executes his bright good plans okay bright means good plans god executes his good plans plans or designs for humanity without revealing it to anybody so again you see god moves in a mysterious way god's actions are very mysterious right but whatever you know uh you know however mysterious it is it is always good for we human beings all right so god executes his good plans for human beings but he does not reveal it to anybody it it is kept secret from us human beings okay so god ka god ke kaam karne ka jo tarika hota hai wo itna secret hai ke wo kabhi uh, reveal nahi karte hai ye secret jo hai wo kabhi reveal nahi karte बट ये सीक्रेट जो है ये ये प्लान जो है ये अच्छे होते हैं हमारे ह्यूमन बींग्स के लिए ओके आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस थिंग आल्सो। ही हाइड्स दिस प्लान एंड ही एग्जीक्यूट्स इट बाय हिज ओन फ्री विल एंड सुवर इन पावर तो ही गॉड एक्चुअली ही हियर इज गॉड गॉड हाइड्स दिस प्लान ओके एंड ही एग्जीक्यूट्स इट बाय हिज ओन फ्री विल तो जब भी वेन एवर गॉड वॉन्ट्स ही एग्जीक्यूट्स इट if when he does not want he will not execute it okay and nobody can control him nobody can control god god is his own owner okay or god is his own master obviously god does not have any master we have master but god does not have any master and he executes it by his own free will whenever he wishes to execute he will execute and sovereign power and does not take any external instruction or help from anyone okay god kabhi kisi se madad nahi lete because he is his own master right so god does not take any external instruction or external help or external advice from any outside okay anybody from any outside element he does not take any advice because he god is omnipotent omnipotent means all powerful So God is all powerful, so He does not take any advice, any instruction, any help from from anybody. All right. So how beautiful these lines are, you see. Next, let us go to stanza three. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take. The clouds ye so much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. Let us see the explanation of these lines. Explanation. In this stanza, the poet tells or addresses the saint. there will be an or here okay tells or addresses the saints or good people not to be afraid and be courageous so in this stanza the poet is addressing the saints or good people that don't be afraid and be courageous now who are these good people these are the people who have not done any harm to anybody so they need not be afraid of the dark clouds i'll explain you the meaning of clouds here but let us try uh, first try to understand this thing okay so here you see in this standard poet tells the good people those good people who have not harmed anybody in life they are practically good pious people we say okay pious people um, you know very pure people pure at heart okay these people okay not to be afraid and be courageous all right and they these people this pious people this pure people this good people this saintly people need not be afraid of the dark clouds ठीक है ये फेयरफुल सेन्स फ्रेश करेज टेक द क्लाउड्स ये सो मच ट्रेड सो व्हाट आर दिस डार्क क्लाउड्स दीज क्लाउड्स रेफर टू द सोरोज डिप्रेशन एंगजाइटी विच द पायस पीपल शुड नॉट बी अफ्रेड ऑफ बिकॉज दीज क्लाउड्स विल शावर द रेन ऑफ मर्सी इसका मीनिंग थोड़ा जान लेते हैं ये क्लाउड्स का मीनिंग क्या है डार्क क्लाउड्स मीन्स 
you know we have ups and downs in our life sometimes we have sorrow sometimes happiness so dark clouds means all the negative things like sorrow anxiety depression tensions okay so the the, the poet is telling that we should not be these pious people should not be these good people should not be afraid of all these things sorrow depression anxiety why because <clears throat> these clouds you know will shower the rain of mercy okay ye jo cheeze hai these sorrows depressions anxieties these these are not permanent these are temporary so these clouds refer to the sorrows depressions and anxiety okay and these clouds will ultimately shower the rain of mercy iska matlab kya that you have heard that saying you know behind every dark cloud there is a silver lining that means what these sorrows depressions and anxieties are not permanent these are temporary and these clouds will definitely now the cloud is dark but this cloud will definitely shower the rain and the rain of what mercy theek hai the rain of mercy will be uh, you know showered by god on these good people so the poet says these good people not to be afraid of these depression tensions anxiety sorrows okay and this rain of mercy will fall as blessings on the heads of these people with pure heart so those people who have pure heart this rain of mercy is a type of a blessing that, that will fall on the heads of these people to ye jo rain of mercy hai ye girega un logo ke sar pe jinka pure heart hai aur ye rain of mercy will work as a blessing for them that is why the poet says that do not be afraid of these dark clouds okay because ultimately it will shower the rain of mercy and this rain of mercy is just like a blessing lekin kiske upar girega ye rain of mercy on whom the rain of mercy will fall as a blessing only on those on the heads of those people who have pure heart okay not negative minded people okay then stanza 4 judge not the lord by feeble sense but trust him for his grace behind the frowning providence he hides a, a smiling face beautiful lines you see beautiful lines okay let us try to uh, look at the explanation here in the fourth stanza the poet says that we should not judge god with our weak sense see we human beings are basically weak we have weak sense we have many negative minded negative thoughts in our mind that is why we judge god with that weak sense only this this is what the poet says that do not judge god with our good with our weak sense okay judge not the lord by feeble feeble matlab weak feeble means weak okay f e e b l e feeble means weak so the poet says that do not judge god with, with your feeble weak sense be strong enough and then you must have trust in god so the poet says that we must have faith in god and trust in him for his grace and mercy upon us but trust him for his grace you see god never thinks bad about us human beings there are you know times when we do not have faith in god we don't trust in him this is wrong according to the poet the poet says that we should thank him we should have faith in god we should trust in him for his grace and mercy upon us just imagine just imagine tomorrow god becomes angry i'm just talking one aspect of uh, you know another aspect of this thing okay say tomorrow god becomes angry it is very easy for a god with just a snap of a finger he can destroy the whole you know earth just imagine he can destroy the whole of earth with just a snap of his finger so we must trust in him have faith in god for his grace and mercy upon us is not it okay and look at the last two lines okay behind a frowning providence he hides a smiling face please keep the book in front of you so that it is easy uh, for you to uh, look at the lines and uh, relate it to the explanation that i am making the last two lines in this stanza show that though god is strict and angry in his action but behind the strictness there is love for him and see god never hates human beings he is strict sometimes he is angry sometimes in his action but behind this strictness there is love for him you know the same example can be given to our parents also our parents are sometimes very strict sometimes very angry in their action but behind their strictness there is love na for for we you know children there is love from the side of our parents our parents lo- they love us uh, you know 
without any conditions they love us unconditionally sometimes they're strict sometimes they're angry in their actions but again behind that strictness there is love for us so in the same manner you see god also he's strict he's sometimes angry in his action but behind that strictness there is love for human beings okay his intention is never wrong god's intentions are never wrong and god keeps on testing us hamara jo hai god jo hai hamara exam leta hai he tests us okay so that we can become stronger god is angry only when human beings do not follow his path what path path of goodness god tabhi angry hota hai jab hum human being jo hai hum unke bataye hue raste pe nahi chalte god is angry only when human beings do not follow his path the path of goodness so god punishes man for his wrong deeds but again his punishment is for the good of humanity only so god jo hai jaise hamare parents hame punish karte hai hum jab kuch kharab karte hai our parents our parents keep punishing us right when we do something wrong but that punishment is again for our good only so in the same manner god punishes man for his wrong deeds but again this punishment is not like he's punishing us as if we are criminals he's punishing us for the good of humanity only his punishment is for the good of humanity so in other words the adverse adverse means bad so the adverse times in our lives are taken by us as punishments but in one way it helps us becoming there to become strong to hum dusre shabdon mein agar hum kahe in other words if we say these adverse times that we have tensions anxieties these and that these are actually tests that god takes why it is maybe a like a type of a punishment only but these adverse times these bad times in our life actually makes us strong provided we have faith in god hame kabhi kabhi lagta hai ki hamara life mein jab bahut sara gham aata hai when we have too much sorrow in our life we blame god that oh god you have given me so too many sorrows i cannot handle this pressure and this and that no have faith in god it is just like an exam it is just like an exam those who pass this exam have faith in god they always become successful hai na they always become successful okay so these bad times actually are like exams that makes us strong let us look at stanza 5 his purposes will ripen fast unfolding every hour the bud may have a bitter taste but sweet will be the flower okay very beautiful lines god's actions have a purpose his purposes will ripen fast god's actions have a purpose and they will ripen or grow fast so god ka jo action hai behind every action of god there is a purpose there is a reason okay and these purpose purposes or this purpose will ripen and grow fast we must have faith and we must have patience it is not that today he will give sorrow and tomorrow he will take away that sorrow no we must have patience so god's purpose is very difficult to understand obviously that is why he is god because he works in a very mysterious way right so his purpose is very difficult to understand and it is only at the right time that this purpose will be revealed to man so har cheez ka ek right time hote for everything there is a right time and it is only at the right time that his purpose god ka purpose jo hai wo that will be revealed to man god's purpose will be revealed to man only at the right time theek hai and you see only few people can understand this purpose of god because we are so much surrounded with money material things money these and that that we are unable to understand or connect to god we are unable to connect to god we may go to temple church mosque this and that but where is that connection where is that connection that connection is missing and that connection should be established and in order to establish that connection we must have unconditional faith in god it is not that only when we are in difficulty we go to god and ask help from him and pray to him no all right so in in a way we are selfish say you have exam in the month of march or maybe there are many students who are having exams right now before exams they'll pray to god god please make me pass no god is never going to do that right so every day you must thank god for the life that you have been blessed with uh, you know by god right so that right time at that right time only this purpose of god will be revealed to man the bud may have a bitter taste means that the difficult times in our lives will give us trouble but the result will be always sweet 
द बर्ड मे हैव अ बेटर टेस्ट ओके इसका मतलब थोड़ा जान लेते हैं लेटर अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग अगेन ओके इट मीन दैट द डिफिकल्ट टाइम्स इन आवर लाइफ विल गिव अस ट्रबल ऑब्वियसली द डिफिकल्ट द बैड टाइम्स इन आवर लाइफ विल गिव यू लॉट्स ऑफ टेंशन लॉट ऑफ ट्रबल्स बट द एंड रिजल्ट प्रोवाइडेड यू हैव पेशेंस प्रोवाइडेड यू हैव फेथ provided you have trust in god that end result will be very sweet so you must have patience faith and trust right so that end result will be very sweet okay so there will be bad times but you must have patience have faith in god only then the end result will be sweet in other words god gives us difficult times to test our patience these difficult times are very bitter so you see the bud may have a bitter taste means that god gives us difficult times to test our patience but these difficult times and these difficult times are very bitter also but the adverse adverse means again bad but this adverse or bad times or difficult times will make us strong ultimately and ultimately this bitter but difficult time bitter but means difficult times but ultimately this bitter but will grow into a sweet flower sweet flower means make us strong and successful all right make us strong and successful i hope you have understood last stanza stanza 6 blind unbelief is sure to err err means error error means mistake do i have explained there but still and scan his work in vain god is his own interpreter and he will make it plain let us see the first two line the first two lines means that man should not lose his faith in god so ultimately the basic of all this thing is that man we human beings we should not lose our faith in god we must have full faith unconditional faith and we must never try to analyze god you see if a man tries to analyze god or interpret his creation he will make a big mistake you see many times we when we become too much educated no we try to analyze even god also we try to examine god also we try to interpret his creation also in our own ways that is wrong and that is what the poet says that if we human beings we try to analyze god or try to interpret or we try to judge god god is like that god is like that we try to judge god we will make a big mistake god is not to be judged he is to be trusted we must have full faith in god unconditionally as i am repeating again and again unconditionally we must judge god say for example a teacher comes to take your class you will judge that teacher obviously that whether he has full knowledge in the subject or not whether he is a good human being or not uh, whether he will be able to teach you properly or not right so this judgment we can make for human beings but not for god okay and if we try to judge god if we are trying to be judgmental you know at least uh, you know in terms of uh, when we think about god we will make a big mistake hum log ek bahut bada mistake karenge and god himself is his own interpreter and he will make his plans clear when it is the right time so here you see god is his own interpreter and he will make it plain means god's work cannot be interpreted cannot be explained by anybody who will explain god's actions god's actions can be explained by god himself no one has the power to ex- explain god's actions only god himself can explain his own work only he himself can interpret his own work and when the right time will come god himself will make his plans clear to us we need not be judgmental we need not examine we need not interpret god's work god himself will do that but only when the right time comes theek hai god khud jo hai apne action ka interpreter wo khud hai to jab waqt aayega wo khud apne plans clear kar denge hame as is said in the first stanza of the poem to yahan pe fir se wo first stanza repeat hota hai you know the first stanza is repeated here that god's plans are mysterious and cannot be understood by man even in the last stanza the same thing is repeated that god will reveal his plans to man only at the right time to god apna plan tabhi hame batayega jab 
सही समय आएगा ओनली वेन द राइट टाइम विल कम ऑल्सो मैन नीड्स टू अचीव द कैपेसिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस प्लान दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि भगवान तो जो है वो अपना प्लान तो वो खुद बताएगा लेकिन हम ह्यूमन बींग्स को वो उन प्लान्स को समझने के लिए हमें भी तो वो कैपेसिटी होना चाहिए वी मस्ट हैव द कैपेसिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड हिज प्लान्स डू वी ह्यूमन इट्स अ बिग क्वेश्चन डू वी ह्यूमन बींग्स डू वी हैव द कैपेसिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड द प्लान्स ऑफ गॉड यस मे बी नो मे नॉट बी वी यू वी ऑल मस्ट ग्रो द कैपेसिटी यू सी say for example say for example there are two you know there are there are two boys say for example there are two boys okay one can drink 1 liter water another boy can drink only half liter water because 1 liter is his capacity half liter is his capacity now if he wants to drink 1 liter water he must grow his capacity capacity of his stomach right or wrong okay so we human beings also we need to grow, have that capacity to understand god's plans not all men can understand god's motive god ka motive ya plan whatever you say all right not all men can understand god's motive we human beings as i said we are surrounded by all materialistic things money power is that we cannot understand his motive because we have lost that connection from god repeatedly the poet is trying to say that let us establish connections with god let us not judge god let us not examine his creation let us not uh, try to interpret or explain god's actions let us just have full faith in god that whatever god will do it will be good for me let me have my full faith in god okay that is what the poet is trying to tell again and again and in the last stanza he says that we need to grow our capacity also to understand his plans right so these this is the explanation of the six stanzas of this beautiful poem light shining out of darkness by william cooper okay so i hope you have understood the poem very nicely and as i said this was the last poem actually i have completed the additional english uh, alternative english syllabus of class 11 all right and uh, slowly slowly i will be bringing more videos i was not able to uh, make videos for a long long time due to many 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 reasons okay uh, let me see if i try to okay oh i'm very sorry one more lesson is left from drama portion okay abraham lincoln and julius caesar you have option here actually um either you can attempt abraham lincoln or uh Lincoln or you can attempt questions from Julius Caesar but i will explain you both okay i'll explain you both uh, abraham lincoln i have already started the uh, the uh, preparation um, you know uh, i'll be completing uh, the presentation part in a few days and then i'll begin with julius caesar okay for your next session upcoming session okay so finally subscribe like and share my video subscribe to the channel okay like and share my videos and share my videos with your friends i have made a long list of playlist okay please check the playlist don't forget to check playlist okay if you keep blindly searching on my channel then you will not get it. check the playlist and you can do one more thing if you want to search any video just type the name say for example this poem light shining out out of darkness so you just write light shining out of out of darkness and just write omnigam light shining out of darkness and then omnigan okay then if the video is there you will definitely get it all right so that's all once again subscribe like and share my videos and subscribe to the channel also share the videos with your friends share the links with your friends i have my website omnigan.blogspot.com now it is changed to omnigan.net okay www.omnigan.net the link is in the description box all the notes definitely class notes i have not yet uploaded okay neither class 11 nor class 12 but from class uh, classes 9 and 10 notes i have uploaded their full notes okay solve question papers also please check the description box for the details follow me on instagram and facebook also that's all from me for today with love from omnigan and all the best to all of you thank you so much